All right, I think we're good to get started. Everyone should be joined and settled. Um, so welcome. Uh, welcome to the Draynar webinar, where we'll be navigating the Draynow app, uh, which will give you access to our mobile load board, where you can find power only loads with the 53 foot intermodal containers. I'll be showing you a uh, look at how to sign up. So the sign up process, uh, and then review how to progress through a load uh, start to finish. And before we dig in, I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, my name is Artie, uh, and I am the Recruitment and Engagement Specialist with Draynow. And my entire role focuses on helping carriers uh, get set up with the Draynow app and ultimately to run freight successfully. So to start off today, we'll be going over uh, what the Draynow app is and how you can use it to find intermodal loads in your area. Next, I'll dive into a few key specific points about the intermodal industry at large. Then I'll cover how to sign up for the app and what qualifications you'll need to complete the process. Uh, after that, I'll be showing you the live app marketplace and how easy it is to choose a load and progress through the trip. So we'll look at it start, start to finish. Following all of this, we'll take a look at some frequently asked questions, and then we'll have time for a Q&A where I'll answer your questions. Uh, and you'll be able to, an to enter your questions um, through the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen. Okay, so the Draynow app. Uh, and what is Draynow? Um, Draynow is a free app that connects carriers and drivers with freight through a mobile load board. And all of the details about each load are shown up front, which you'll see shortly during the demo load demonstration. We'll walk through everything. So you can sign up, sign into the app, and begin viewing all the available freight through the mobile load board and quickly get an idea of freight that you're interested in hauling and plan your day or week out accordingly. And to be more specific, Draynow has local power only loads for carriers and drivers looking to run 53 foot intermodal containers out of the rail yards in a number of cities throughout the United States. Uh, and one important thing to mention is the app is free to download and free to use and allows carriers and drivers the flexibility to select the freight they're interested in running. So the Draynow app makes running freight seamless. Everything from entering the rail yard to submitting your bill of lading or accessorials, uh, such as detention time. Everything's run through the app and laid out step by step. So what is intermodal? Uh, so far, we've covered what the Draynow app has to offer specifically, but I think it's important to talk a little bit more about the intermodal industry more broadly. Uh, so intermodal drayage refers to short container moves, such as pickups, deliveries, there's cross towns, uh, and empty repos. Th those are the main ones. And these distinctions are important, and they can affect how a carrier or driver runs day to day. So I'm going to go into a, a bit of detail about each one. So pickups, they're moves that originate from the rails with an empty container. So you enter the rail yard, you pick up an empty container. You take that container and it's loaded at the consignee and then you return it back to the rails. Deliveries are the opposite. Those are moves that originate with a loaded container. So you pick up a loaded container at the rail and then unload it at the consignee before returning with the empty back to the rails. Crosstown moves, those involve taking a loaded container from one rail yard to another rail yard as it travels across the country. So for example, moving a loaded container from Union Pacific onto BNSF as it moves you know, on its journey across, across the United States. Empty repos, they involve moving an empty container as the name suggests, from point A to point B. And there's a couple different options there. You could be moving the empty from the rail to the consignee, the consignee to a, a different consignee, or a consignee to a rail yard. Uh, in addition to the variety of load types uh, that you're able to run 
Uh, perhaps the most important thing to consider is that overall intermodal drayage is more fuel efficient than running over the road. It involves less wear and tear on the driver and the truck and allows you to spend more time at home with your family and friends. So now we'll, we'll take a look at the requirements to get set up uh, with DrayNow and haul freight. Uh, so a couple things. In order to partner with DrayNow, you'll need to have an active interstate MC and DOT number. You'll need a tandem axle tractor that can be either a day cab or a sleeper cab. Uh, and in terms of insurance, you'll need to have active auto and car cargo insurance with a minimum AM best rating of A minus or higher. And your insurance agent can walk you through those steps. Um, and even, even though we deal with a, a radius of about 250 miles around the rail ramps, uh, the freight itself that we deal with is crossing state lines, which is why we have that interstate MC number requirement. So oftentimes, this is important to note, oftentimes the freight that we, we are dealing with does not cross state lines. So it's intrastate, but you would still need to be set up to do interstate work. So now I'll give you a brief rundown uh, of the signup process and talk about the information you'll be required to enter. Um, so after downloading the app, uh, which you can see on the left here, uh, you'll be asked to provide your personal information, such as your MC number, right? We just talked the active interstate MC. So you have to enter your MC number, your email and phone number. And this information is required uh, to set up your username so that ultimately you can sign into the app. Uh, and gain access to the load board. Uh, once you've entered your personal credentials, uh, you'll be prompted to complete your business information through RMIS, which you can see over to the right. Uh, this list of requirements is shown up front that you could see here, they're all listed out. Uh, and you can refer back to them if you're in the process of acquiring your authority, uh, updating your insurance, or you know changing your company contact information. And after you submit your information through RMIS, your account will be verified and then you'll receive your username so you can sign in and start looking at all the freight that DrayNow has to offer. So now we're going to take a look um, at the demo load demonstration. So we'll pull that up. And it's important to note that this is the actual live marketplace. So these are, uh, this is a snapshot of the real marketplace with real loads, um, real rates. Um, so that, that is a good picture of what you'll see. Okay, so now we're going to run a demo load. Um, first thing is to sign into the marketplace, which you can see here. And if you look at the top of the screen, uh, under marketplace, that allows you to filter on your city. There's also some additional filters here. So if you're looking for a certain amount or if you wanna set the trips to any price, you can do that. Or if you have a preference for round trip distance. Um, so overall, uh, we deal with about a 250 mile radius and you'll see in the marketplace, everything from short cross towns all the way up to about 500 miles round trip. So these filters allow you to kind of refine what you're looking for. Now, if you click on Chicago, for example, so you can see, you know, you're able to filter by marketplace. Now we are looking at the marketplace. Um, so you can see here uh, all the available freight and then each load, it'll show you all the pertinent details. So the big things are, whether it's a pickup, a delivery, a one-way pickup, uh, it'll show you the appointment time or appointment window at the shipper. It'll show you the round trip mileage, the all-in rate, and you're able to select the loads that you're interested in running. So if we look here, um, let's say I'm interested in this 24 mile round trip pickup. 
right? Uh, starting at Cicero. So we're going to request that one. So if you click into it, it'll show you all the pertinent details. Like I was saying, you'll see the starting rail location, the shipper location, and then the termination location. Uh, then if you scroll down, you'll see the container type, uh, the weight, whether it's general merchandise, um, we don't run hazmat loads, and then we're looking at a live load. So we're gonna, we're gonna request this load. We're gonna run this. This just tells you, you know, you've requested it. Um, now the load is on you. So we're gonna move from the general marketplace here to my trips. And that's where you'll see all your scheduled loads. Okay, so um, you'll see awaiting customer customer approval. Uh, once it's approved, uh, which you know should take a couple minutes, you'll be able to begin. Excellent. So we are ready to run this load. Um, the first step would be to hit begin. So this is the day of your trip. You're ready to start, uh, and you're going to head to BNSF Cicero. So we'll hit begin. And now we're going to drive to equipment location. So we're going to head to BNSF Cicero. Once you arrive at the rail yard, you're going to need to give them the SCAC code, which you can see here, your reservation number, and your container number. Now it's important to note that you'll need to be registered at the rails um, in order to enter the rail yard. If you're not registered at the rail yard, don't worry. You can go to the driver assist window. They'll take down your credentials. And then you can provide this information uh, every visit and be able to just in gate and out gate. So you've arrived at the rail yard. We're going to hit I've arrived. And now you're going to look for your container. So this load is a pickup. You're going to look for an empty EMHU container. So you're going to go through the yard, uh, and you'll once you find a suitable empty, you want to do a thorough check. You want to make sure the chassis doesn't have any issues or the container doesn't have any holes. Uh, you find a suitable container and chassis. So you're going to hook up. Uh, you've got your container and. Uh, your chassis. So for this demo, we're going to enter EMHU12345. And for a chassis number, we'll enter 12345. So on a real load, you're going to have an actual container and chassis. Once you hook up, you'll enter those informa that information. In. Now you're going to hit, I've hooked up. And you're going to outgate the container. Once you depart the rail yard, you're going to hit I've departed. And you're going to head to the shipper. So here it'll show you you're heading to Artie's Furniture Emporium. It gives you the address and your appointment window. So you can see here you have until 2300 to get to the shipper. You're going to hit arrive when you arrive. You want to make sure that you're at the right location. So, yes. And they're going to load your container. So, this is a live load. So, you're going to stick with the same container that you, you hooked up to at the rail yard. So, once they load you, you're going to hit loaded. And you're going to collect the BOL. And this is important. You want to make sure that the BOL is signed and contains your in and out times. Um, so since this is a live load, you're going to enter in the same container and chassis. So EMHU12345 for the container number. 
chassis number is going to be one, two, three, four, or five. You can enter one, two, three, four, five for the seal. Uh, for this demo, it'll be a hundred pieces, which will be listed on the BOL, 10,000 pounds. Destination city will be Philadelphia PA. So again, once you collect the BOL, you'll enter this information in. You get the BOL signed within and out times, and now you're ready to depart. So you'll hit next. And you're gonna scan your BOL. So you wanna make sure that you're taking a clear scan. And if the BOL is multiple pages that you list or scan each page, and again, that the BOL is signed with in and out times. And that's important. Let me let me just back up. Having the BOL scanned with in and out times is important um, for things like accessorials, detention, for example. You want to make sure that your in and out times are documented. So once you hit scan, it's going to pull up exactly. You pull up your camera. You'll scan your BOL. Perfect. And it'll give you the option to add another page or retake the image uh, if it's not clear. So this looks perfect. We're going to hit save. And now you're going to depart the shipper and head to the termination location. Perfect. So yeah, drive to the termination location, which you can see here is BNSF Cicero. You can scan your in-gate receipt. Um, you're going to have to provide the SCAT code again to enter the rail yard. And you're going to terminate the load. So you're going to drop the container and chassis. You're going to hit load terminated. So you want to make sure you have the right rail location. So BNSF Cicero. So like we talked about before, if you have any accessorials, for example, detention time, stop off, um, you can add accessorial and you'll hit finish. So this just confirms, you know, if you have accessorials, you've added them all. You'll hit confirm. And now you've completed your first load. So congratulations, you've completed your first drain out load. Uh, now we're gonna look at some frequently asked questions and then we will move on to a Q&A session. This is an excellent question. Can I rent a truck from drain out? Uh, the short answer is no. So in order to partner with drain out, you'll need to have a tandem axle tractor. Uh, like I said before, either a day cab or a sleeper cab. Uh, and you don't need a trailer. Um, so the loads are power only, meaning that the containers are going to be loaded onto the chassis already in the rail yard. So you can't rent a truck uh, from Dre now. How heavy is the typical Dre now load? Another excellent question. Um, this uh, depends. So a typical Dre now load can vary. I've seen them from light to heavy, uh, but the weight of the container and the freight, it's shown to you up front in the app. Uh, so each load, you know, when we're looking at the demo load demonstration, you can see um, the weight up front before you tender a load. So you know exactly how much it weighs. How do I get my own authority? Another great question. Uh, so in order to acquire your authority, you would need to contact the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration or FMCSA. Uh, they have an application process um, and I'm told that it can take up to 60 business days. Um, not always, but um, if you talk to me um, or you've talked to me over the phone or, or you know, you will talk to me, you'll, you'll hear me say all the time that time is money. So. Knowing that it can take 60 business days, I think is good up front. Uh, so um, 
you go through the FMCSA to get set up with your authority. Do I need my own SCAC code or TWIC card? Um, the answer is no, the short answer. Uh, so in order to run a drain out load, uh, we saw this at the, the first step of the demo load, um, drain out provides the SCAC. So you would ingate or enter the rail yards uh, on a drain out load under our SCAC code. Uh, and a TWIC card is a, a credential that is used at the ports or maritime facilities throughout the United States. So um, you don't need a TWIC card and you would not need your own SCAC. How do I register for the rails? Uh, registering at the rails uh, is fairly straightforward. They have what's called a driver assist office, um, which typically has a window. You, you'll hear this, uh, the driver assist window. So typically you're able to pull up uh, to this window. They'll take down your personal credentials before you're able to gain access to the rail facility. And once you register once, all your subsequent visits, you'll be able to in-gate you know, enter the rail facility without any issue. Excellent. So now we're going to move on uh, to the Q&A section here. Um, and you can enter your questions at the bottom of the screen. There's a Q&A tab um, and, and we'll get started. So we've got a question coming in right now. Let's see if we can pull that up. Um, so let's see, we can leave it at this. So um, first question that we have is what is the typical makeup of a drain out carrier? That is an excellent question. Um, so the typical makeup of a drain out carrier is a single owner operator that has their authority that's looking to do power only loads. Uh, and outside of that, I would say we partner with small carriers, you know, that are looking to, to utilize our load board, to keep their trucks moving. They want to be able to keep track of their drivers, you know, and have a streamlined app. Uh, so everything would go through our app um, and they're, they're able to kind of keep track of everybody. Um, we've got another excellent question here coming in. Uh, it's, it's, it's a very good question. So how far out are loads usually posted on the marketplace? Um, that is a great question. So typically uh, freight can be posted anywhere from a day ahead of time up to a week. Uh, so you can kind of plan your day out ahead, you know, get everything set. Uh, or plan your a few days out or a week out um, to kind of fill gaps in your schedule. Um, so everything's filled up, you know exactly what you're doing uh, and you can kind of keep moving along that way. All right, we're gonna, we've got them rolling in here. So uh, here is another very solid question. What would happen if the load I picked up was overweight? Uh, so if a container's overweight, you should contact, basically call our operations team um, before moving, before, you know, outgating, so we could figure out a solution to, to sort the container out so that you don't have to run heavy, is what I would say. You know, you, you don't want to run heavy, go through a scale, that can be a problem. So just keep us in the loop and we can help you. Okay, um, let's take a look and see if we have any other questions. Oh, there is, this is a great question that just came in. So are we responsible for tires and breakdown of the chassis on the road? Uh, the short answer would be yes. Once you've outgated the container and chassis, you're responsible for that. 
However, like I just mentioned, um, if you're doing a, a thorough container and chassis check in the rail yard before you move uh, and you notice an issue, um, the, the chassis has a bad tire or the container has a hole in it, call us um, before doing anything and we would help you get sorted out so that you're not pulling bad equipment or equipment that you're not comfortable with. All right, I think that is all the questions that we have coming in. Um, we can move forward, I think we're good. And that concludes our webinar. Uh, I appreciate everyone attending and you can also uh, follow Dre now on our blog. We have Facebook and Twitter. And then if you wanna get in touch with me directly, uh, you can see my email here, uh, it's truck T-R-U-C-K at draynow.com or reach me over the phone, uh, which is 267-428-2701. I'm available all the time. Um, so give me a call and we can get you set up. And I hope you have a great day.